So Bob, there's been a lot of controversy over the years about stem cells, a lot of fear and concerns. Where did that originate from? What, what have people heard uh, about uh, that's caused this concern um, that you can assuage their fears about? Well, you remember from medical school, embryology is the study of how we originate from a single cell into an embryo and then form a fully functioning human being. Um, it was that original work that led to scientists looking at the leftover um, uh, embryos from in vitro fertilization program. These are the ones that are going to be discarded because they're not used to see if they could isolate some cells and then grow them up into a population of cells that could potentially be used in therapy. That means you have to destroy an embryo. Um, and early on, the controversy that, e that erupted was that at the stage of, of, of when you can isolate stem cells, that embryo still has the potential to go on to become a human being. Does it constitute a, a life that you you should not be allowed to to compromise or sacrifice. That was that was the fundamental origins of the controversy. Then, because you can get stem cells from a few stages down in development from the fetus, and as a byproduct of abortion, scientists showed you could isolate stem cells from the leftovers of the, of the abortion process. These put a very very significant part of the community. Um, uh, under great concern that there could be a, a very perverted incentive to create human human life in the form of an embryo or a fetus just to destroy it. Yeah. And so the pro-life, pro pro-choice um uh, uh debate was the was the foundation upon which the controversy around stem cells uh, really emerged. And I'm very happy to say that that our discovery of the placenta as a as an ideal alternative to that, and by the way, the placenta is pro life and pro choice. Right? Yes. <laughs> so, so there is no there is no objection to using the leftovers of a full term healthy pregnancy to derive stem cells. It's abundantly available. The economics are better, and if I can get a dozen cells from an embryo, I'm lucky. I can get a billion cells easily, multi billion cells from a placenta. So the sheer the sheer logistical convenience of using the placenta, all of the characteristics I'm telling you about, the, the immune tolerating ability of the placenta, the universal donor characteristics, all that make the placenta just an ideal source to obviate the need to use for embryos or fetal material. Yeah. So I just want folks to understand the original controversy um, and concerns originated from the idea of using embryonic stem cells from an abortion, from a fetus. And um, today, the stem cell industry uh, under Bob's leadership and, and others has matured far past that, where we can now uh, identify, we can give you back your own stem cells. We can, we can extract them. We can concentrate them. We can manipulate them in a number of ways. We should talk about that, again, because that's not yet FDA approved. Hopefully, under a new administration, it will be. Um, or we can give you placental or umbilical cord uh, stem cells, allogeneic from somebody else, which are safe and have been done. How many, how many total allogeneic stem cells uh, treatments do you think your best guess have been done around the world? Oh, millions. Millions. Okay. Many, many. So, yeah. So, I mean, I just, this is not like a, a wild frontier of an idea someone came up with in their garage and is, is trying on you. Exactly. Here's, here's, here's you know, new, bad news travels fast. Okay. Yes. If cell therapy, and I make this argument all the time, and, 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 and I sometimes pit myself against others in the field. If, if bad things happen from cell therapy, if bad things happen from using stem cells in, in treating different diseases, the bad news would travel fast. Now, there have been a few isolated situations where people with, with irreversible, hopeless diseases sought cell therapy from, let's, let's, let's admit it, from certain unscrupulous, um, opportunistic providers. And as a, as, a, as a therapy of last resort for them, because they're trying everything. That's right. And, 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 and listen, I have such a lot of respect for the FDA. The, the current head of the, the, uh, the division of the FDA that oversees cell therapy, Dr. Peter Marks, um, 
has an incredibly complicated, difficult job, and he has done an amazing, amazing job in focusing attention. He wants to see these therapies approved. He wants to make sure they're approved the right way. And he wants to make sure that that there's never a shortcut in producing the products. I, I, I salute that completely. And I celebrate yeah. that completely. Yeah, I mean, it's important for people to know there are a lot of mom and pop shops uh, around right. around the country that will promise you stem cell treatments. And, um, and you need to really understand the origin, their experience, because they're not legally doing it. Let's begin with that. They're operating in the gray zone between a fully developed regulated therapeutic that meets the high standards of safety and efficacy prescribed by the FDA. They kind of try and they try and go around that. Um, groups like ours do the hard work of taking these um, candidate therapies through the process of clinical development, clinical trials, where we are controlling the treatments, we're controlling the analysis, we're controlling the manufacturing, because that's the best way to ensure that no one takes a shortcut to to transforming the way a disease is treated. Yeah. But I'll tell you, but I'll tell you this much: I do believe that there is room here. I do believe there's room here, and and I'm in, I'm in the dialogue. There's room to be more receptive and more open to accelerating the process of review for cell therapies and also and this is a little little pet peeve of mine taking advantage of the long safety track record of cell therapy and allowing some of the evaluation to take place on the run in other words have of some form of a provisional approval process where cell therapies that meet a high standard for safety Okay, yeah. are allowed to be tried, particularly in some of these hopeless diseases. Let, let's let's talk about ALS, right? Lou Gehrig's disease. Nothing works there. You're going to die if you have ALS. I don't see a downside to using a number of cell therapy products that meet that safety standard, and then collecting rigorously collecting the data. It'll actually do do us a big favor to open up the number of programs where we're where we're very rigorous about collecting data in order. To make better decisions about what's what is acceptable or not acceptable to, to be moved into the therapeutic uh, armamentarium of doctors. 